Our next speaker is the senior layout artist and the social media manager at Areopagus Communications, promotions coordinator Father McGivney Office, Philippines, and currently teaching desktop publication at Colegio de San Juan de Letran. Please welcome Miss Ronaline Regino. Um, I'm Ronaline Regino. You can call me Lynn. I'm actually just one of the employees of Monsignor Pedro Quitorio. And I have no idea why I was asked to be one of your speakers today. Since I feel like, um, yung mga kalevel ko, di ba? It's Sean Patrick Louvet. It's Monsignor Pedro Quitorio. It's the CEO, Executive Director of this and that. And who am I? Hi, I'm Lynn. I'm laying out CBCP monitor. Goodbye. So, why am I here? Um, I was asked to talk about the power of visuals. So, visuals, do you have any idea what visuals are? Visuals, tell me one thing that you can, uh, th tell me one, what's the first word, rather, that comes up to your mind when you hear the word visuals? Anyone? What? Pictures, photographs, what else? Videos? Uh, what else? Maps, objects. So you're all you're all correct. Um, visuals. Um, this may be objects, maps, graphics, photographs, videos, anything that can be seen or read. So where's my PowerPoint? There. Oh, there it is. Um, next, please. Na late pala. Visuals. Like I said, this is anything that can be seen or read. Next, please. Okay, um, visuals is becoming more and more in demand nowadays. It's not enough that you just text. It's not enough that you just hear hearsays or rumors. Hey, this person did this and did that. After hearing those things, what do we ask for? We look for proofs, right? Um, how do we prove something? Uh, how do we prove someone tweeting something? We ask for what? We ask for screen cap. Do you know what screen cap is? We ask for proof. It's not enough that you read this somewhere. It's not enough that you heard this from someone. We always ask for proof. And the only proof that we can show someone is through visual. We either take a photo of it, take a video of it, or draw something about it, like cartoons, illustrations. Um, if you notice, whenever... Uh, let's go back first. Uh, if you notice, when you read... Let's say, for example, you read that you read, you read you're reading a novel or a newspaper or anything that's pure text. What happens afterwards? You feel like um, it's text heavy, or you're having an information overload. Tama ba? And then after that, what do we do? We tell ourselves, Ah, I need a break. And when we ask for a break, we open the TV, we watch commercials, we watch this and that. We go to YouTube, we watch videos, we watch Aldog, whatever. We ask, we, we ask for something more visual, not magbabasa, not makikinig, but visual. This is our own preference of having breaks. Now, for example, when you go outside, uh, have you seen the booths outside? Meron ba kayong nakita? Have you seen anything that's pure text? Everything there is what? Tarpaulins, videos, flyers, what else? Um, aside from flyers, tarpaulins, we also see guides. You see the exit guides, the signs, the stop sign, go here, go there. It's just not enough that you read something. We always ask for something that we can see, that we can prove that we saw. Patunayan mo, nakita ba ng sarili mong mata? Now, um, next please. Another good example of visuals would be Shannon. infographics. Do you know what infographics are? Um, nowadays, sometimes when we ask, or when, um, by the way, aside from um, Ariopagus, Communi uh, Ariopagus Communications Incorporated is handling the social media accounts of CBCP News. Do you know CBCP News? And then sometimes people ask, what are archdioceses? Who are the cardinals? Who are this and who are that? Instead of 
posting a long passage, a long text, telling this or that, what we do instead is we compose infographics. How come? Infographics are very um, engaging, it's playful to the eye, and somehow it entertains you. It's not enough that you're just reading blah, 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 blah. Kailan ba ito matatapos? Have you experienced that? It's like you want to skip to the end just to figure out what you're reading. However, with infographics, with just one object, you can see everything you need. For example, with this, I think this was done by, you know, Sky Ortigas? I think that it was at Sky Ortigas who did this in infographic about Corpus Christi. If you're following CBCP News, you may have seen this. This is one good example of visual infographics. Another thing, next please. Signs or symbols. Upon seeing this symbol, what do you think it is? It asks you to do what? To stop, halt, or what? No entry. Alam nga namang makita nyo siya, tas dire-direcho pa din kayo, di ba? Somehow, with visuals, it tells you something that is common sense. You don't have to... Um, you don't have to give a lot of effort to understand something. Um, next, please. How effective are visuals really? Gaano ka importante ang visuals? Let's find out. Um, I'll be showing photos and viewer discretion is strictly advised. Have you seen this picture? It's... Let me ask now personally. Let's not be contented with, this is a Syrian boy. The name of that Syrian boy is Alan Kurdi. Um, oh my God, I'm crying. Anyway, uh, with Alan Kurdi, um, Alan Kurdi together with his family and other refugees from the war zone are trying to cross a border. And upon crossing that border, they're both capsized. And they died. And then, um, this photo circulated online. Here in the Philippines, we don't usually post photos that are this intense. What we usually do is we blur, right? Or we add black, black circle, or we try to pixelate whatever looks, um, whatever looks bloody or whatever looks very intense. But with one of the newspapers in Germany, Bild newspaper, they printed this they printed this photo. After which they got angry readers telling them, "Why did you post this? You're so sensitive." They got reactions that are they got reactions they didn't expect. They were expecting for people to help these refugees. They were expecting for people to be woken up. But what they did was they got angry they, sh they try to shut down, build. After that, in re not really retaliation, but in retaliation, what build did was this. Next, please. It doesn't show entirely, but they published their newspaper without having any photos. And with this, they are trying to tell people that um, visuals have the power to shock someone. And if you're shocked, you're either going to do something or you're going to do nothing. With the photo of Alan Kurdi, it triggered what? Artists draw, draw their own version, right? They draw their own version. They drew, rather. They drew their own version. They wrote, they wrote, they write tributes and other things. With Build, they tried to, uh, no, they published the photo in order to encourage people to welcome refugees. But, by having opposite reactions, they got, uh, they got somehow um, confused. What do we do? So what they did was, they tried to give tribute to photography. They said, um, their editor-in-chief, Julian Richel, he said that without pictures, the world would be ignorant, invisible. And it's true. Sometimes whenever we read something, or we come across a rumor saying, Uy, may bagyo sa ganito. Ah, okay. Moving on. Diba? Have you ever experienced that? That sometimes we're also used to what's happening around. 
we are also used to the tragedies that it no longer shocks it no longer shocks us it, we're used to it that it no longer has power over us so the tendency for media practitioners to do is that we try to give them visuals we let them see what's happening and how do we do that we do it by taking photos taking videos moving on um, another example with CBCP news, let's say, for example, Cardinal Tagle is having a mass. And then during his homily, um, we got something, we got an excerpt that we find interesting. Instead of just posting the quote and saying that it came from Cardinal Tagle, what we do in our office is we try to produce photo quotes. You know photo quotes? Um, please try to compare from this to the next one. Which is more compelling for you? Is it, this, is it the first one or this one? With this one, it shows you a photo of Cardinal Tagle. It, all, it also shows you who took, who took the photo of Cardinal Tagle. It says here, photo by Roy Lagarde. And what else? It also shows who edited the photo quote. So it's not just somehow with posting the, CBC, with posting the quote from CBCP News, you're not just giving credit to Cardinal Tagle, but you're also boosting the credit, you're also boosting the career or credibility of Roy Lagarde, of the one who edited the photo, and this and that. It's not just one person alone. Because if you post a if you post a quote, it's just Cardinal Tagle alone, right? But with this, it involves three or more people. Na iintindihan po yung aking point. Okay, next please. With this, traffic sa EDSA. Bago ba to? Is this new? Um, actually, yesterday, when we were on our way here, Sermon, um, Sermon Bandril and I and my husband, when we were on our way here, it only took us one hour. One hour or less than one and a half hours. And we were like, what's happening? Something's wrong. Because we're so used to traffic already. And then, going back to this um, phrase, when we say, ang traffic sa EDSA, yeah, what's new? And how can you intensify this phrase? By posting a photo. For example, Exhibit A. Can you see clearly? These are all cars. And it's like a parking lot. Another example. Go back. Um, this happened in 2013. Whenever you say, whenever we say, bumagyo sa ganito, there's a storm here. There's a, there's a storm in this area, in this area. We're like, eh, we're so used to storms. It's no big deal for us Filipinos, right? But with what happened with Eastern Samar in Tacloban, instead of just saying this, bumagyo sa Samar, ang daming namatay, it doesn't... It doesn't have intensity anymore because we're so used to this phrase. But if you use a photo showing what? Body, bodies of dead people. With this, you can already see na something grave has happened. It's not just simply bagyo. Okay, next please. With one by one. Okay, with visuals, it evokes more emotion. For example, with um, Alan Curdy, it empowered people to do what? To, ag to accept um, refugees. They did what? They asked for petition to accept refugees. Even the Philippines, they are trying to what? Adopt refugees while, while, while they are waiting for their adoptive countries. Another thing, visuals add more tension. Like I said, traffic sa EDSA, eh. but ang traffic sa EDSA with the photo included on it. Like, oh no, what's happening? Another thing, visuals encourage greater engagement. Greater engagement how? For example, um, whenever, uh, I'm not sure no, in, this, in, in bathrooms here, um, I think we're always reminded to wash our hands, right? 
Wash your hand whenever you touch something dirty after you use the bathroom. And sometimes what we do is just we open the faucet, oh, we open the faucet and then we just wash like this, right? We don't even use soap. Tama ba? Guilty. Who's guilty here? But with comfort rooms, sometimes it's useful that they also post images on how to wash your hands properly. How do you wash hands? How do we wash our hands properly? May ganito, ganyan, right? With a photo posted on the on um, comfort rooms, it gives it encourages you to do more than just this, right? Okay, next please. Now, why do we have to use why do we have to use use visuals? Please raise your hands. Who, um, whoever has smartphones here, please raise your hands. Visuals. Is it enough that you just text nowadays? No, right? Like, this is something that I keep on saying. Text is not something that is normal na lang nowadays. It's, uh, text is something that is normal nowadays. It's not enough anymore. With smartphones, I mean, in sinong may Instagram? And who here are very um, cautious about what they post on Instagram? I want like lang ako buburahin ko nakakahiya. Right? People are very conscious. You know what? I um I know someone, I know this person that we we try to tease her of uh, we try to tease her by posting a photo of her on Facebook that doesn't look good. And he's, uh, she's so angry to the point that she's trying to throw the cell phone. Just for us not to, not us, but just for the person I know not to post her photo. Bakit? Masisira yung ano ko. Masisira yung image ko. I'm this beautiful girl who always use this. Always use that. And then you're going to take a photo of me sleeping with my laway like this? No. Diba? With visuals, we try to give more credibility to ourselves. What else? We use visuals, sometimes it's to boost our own confidence. Let's say, for example, um, you don't use makeup very often. And then, there's, a, there's an occasion, and you know, that, you know the hashtag GGSS? What's GGSS? Gandang ganda sa sarili. GGSS... We use hashtag GGSS when we look very, when we find ourselves pretty and handsome. So it's not enough, I look very pretty today. No, you have to have a proof that you look pretty. So click, then post, right? I mean, in mano hindi, there are girls and boys who are like that. So why do we need visuals? For, um, Visuals are easily shareable. Shareable because social media. In social media, uh, there's a study according to Buffer. Do you know Buffer? For social media practitioners here, do you know Buffer? Anyway, um, Buffer conducted a study and they, they learned that 89% of tweets that have photos uh, sorry, tweets that have photos attached to them have 89% of having retweets. Meaning to say, for, again, for example, with Facebook, um, remember the picture of Cardinal Tagle that I showed earlier? That photo had, I think, um, 4,000 shares and 9,000 likes. Do you think with just posting a quote, you would have shares? First thing, you cannot just, when you share a quote on Facebook, somehow the text got, the text gets what? Um, lightened up. Diba? Yung text, hindi na siya plain black. And nababawasan, the intensity of that quote gets less and, uh, the, the, the intensity gets less, gets lesser and lesser every time people share it. Whereas, if it's photo that it's if it's photo they're sharing, makikita mo mismo yung buong photo. And the tendency is for people to find it, ah, oh, this is good, so I'll share it as well. And you're attending Catholic Social Media Summit. And if, 
um, there's nothing more shareable online than visuals. It may either be a photograph or a clip. Do you know Vine? And what else? Even Instagram offers how many seconds? Six? F 15? 15 seconds, right? It's easily shareable. Um, do you remember the fight of, Ron do you know Ronda Rousey? You remember her fight with, I forgot her name, but it only took 14 seconds. Do you remember that? And for people who wasn't able to watch the fight itself, they were able to watch the entire fight just using Instagram because it only, it's only composed of 14 seconds. And it easily got shared. Um, you, don't have, you don't necessarily have to log into YouTube or watch a replay. You don't have to take note, kailan ba replay ng game? No. You can just watch it on your smartphones. Another thing, why do we need visuals? It transmits messages more quickly. Um, aside from, you know what, if you're an employee of Monsignor Pedro Quitorio, it's not enough that you know just one thing. It's not enough that you just know how to write or how to lay out. If you know how to do something, he will make you do it for as many opportunity as you can. So with us in our office, we're all multitasking. Aside from layout artists, I promote a saint, Father McGivney. He's the founder of the Knights of Columbus. Um, Father McGivney is in line for canonization. And whenever I give talks to school, I find students bored. Blah, 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 blah. Salita ng salita, walang maintindihan. To, re to, um, to come, um, not really, but in order to fix that problem, wherein students no longer listen to me, I just show them a video of Father McGivney. Like, for example, with you, if I tell you the whole history of the Knights of Columbus and Father McGivney, somehow it doesn't seem interesting. I know, I should know. And with other people as well, I know that that's how they think. But by watching a five-minute video of Father McGivney, you will know who he is, why he is in line for canonization. Um, <laughs> Father Michael McGivney's priestly ministry was filled with trial. After all, he lived during a time when Irish Catholics were viewed with great suspicion. By the end of the Irish potato famine, millions of Irish immigrants had made their way to America's major port cities in search of a better life. However, once they arrived, often impoverished and weakened by the journey, they crowded into cramped spaces which lacked adequate sewage and running water. Marginalized, many Irish men struggled to find work and ended up in low-paying, dangerous factory jobs where an unexpected injury or death often left the family destitute. Father Michael McGivney was no stranger to this reality. The son of working-class Irish immigrants, he'd experienced the death of six of his siblings as well as his own father. Like so many others, from early on, he'd known the sorrow of poverty. Father Michael McGivney sought a way to restore hope and to bolster the self-esteem of the men in his community. And so he gathered two dozen men in the basement of St. Mary's Church to found a Catholic fraternal society to support widows in need. Together, through their Christian witness, they would not only become good citizens, but great Americans. They called themselves the Knights of Columbus.
Founded upon the principles of unity, charity, fraternity, and patriotism, these men responded to Father Michael McGivney's call to evangelize their community and eventually the world through their faith and works of mercy. Today, the Knights of Columbus have grown into the world's largest lay Catholic organization, with over 1.8 million members worldwide. Some of America's most renowned citizens are numbered among their ranks. And as impressive as this legacy is, perhaps most remarkable is how a humble parish priest, a priest of heroic virtue, continues to inspire generations of ordinary men to become not just great men, but knights in shining armor to millions of people in their time of need. didn't understand the audio, right? But it's fine because you, you've seen who Father McKivney is. You've seen how he looks like. So every time you see her, his flyer or any, you see tarpaulins around this place, you will know that it's Father McKivney, regardless if you understand the audio or not. Um, last two slides, please. Um, with visuals, instead of telling people, you can just show them. For example, with General Luna, um, next please, and then this is my last slide. Instead of reading long texts of history, with, his, with General Luna, you easily understood, not really entirely what happened during their time, but you had an idea what their era is about. And with that, I wrap up my talk. Thank you for attending the Catholic Social Media Summit, and I hope you stay and learn from all of us speakers. Good morning.